doesn't even look at you. Does that say anything? Because he was talking shit the entire time. Uh, yeah. I was like, look me in the eye, punk. You know, I spent a whole week uh, taking harassment from you and your whole entourage uh, at the casino and uh, just saying, calling me every name under the sun, and but uh, you guys are going to take me to the hood and show me what ghetto's like. And uh, So when you were walking oh, through for the press conference, they, they wouldn't stop chirping? Oh, the, the, whole, the whole week. The press conference, the weigh-ins, uh, uh, yeah, I'd, we'd see we'd see them in the lobby in the casino. We go to eat somewhere. They're there harassing us a few tables down. So by the time I got in the ring, I remember he had a big entourage and there like a dozen plus in his corner. Because he's married to a, a movie star, some, a, a C-list, some wannabe C-list, C-list, rapper. C-list celebrity. I never heard of her until I uh, was was training to get ready to fight Dargan. <laughs> like who? Some some mo some mo bitch. But. Uh, <laughs> Some moment. Uh, I remember uh, by the time I get in the ring, there's like a dozen plus in his entourage, and uh, and it's just and you just you... chirping me. And at that point, <laughs> I was like, I had steam coming out of my ears, and I just remember thinking, I hope I got enough left when this is over, because I'm got you, 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 <laughs> the parking lot out back, yeah. And I'm just thinking, there's a target on your head, yours, yours, yours. But uh, were you then, fighting? Did you want to hurt him? Absolutely. Like, did you feel that way against Red Cash or Hernandez or any of your other fights? Uh, yeah, this was a little meaner though. Like, there was more. There was some more intent into this fight because of all the trash talk from his team that that led up to this. Um, there was a little bit. It was a little bit more personal. You know, I really felt undermined and underestimated, and I was just my confidence was a little higher too from this because I got to remember um, my fight with Red Cash was just two fights earlier, and it was the kind of fight where. My stock went up in defeat. Red catches went down in victory because this guy was supposed to put me away in four rounds. I went the distance, and arguably, in a lot of people's eyes, should have won or at least got a draw. And then after that, I kept up the momentum. I beat Wanzel Ellison, who was 11 and 0, the summer before this fight with Dargan. So leading into this fight with Dargan, I was a more confident fighter than I was getting ready for Red Catch. So I got to work much sooner in this fight uh, and, and applying my game plan. As you can see, we're already in the second round. I've already taken away his distance. And this is the third round of the knockdown. Yeah. I just remember everything was flowing real smooth. And he seemed frustrated because you're not giving him an inch at this point. Well, I think what he underestimated, I remember I didn't even try to throw that whole card. It was just I saw him moving, let the shot go before he gets out of range, and it just landed. But I don't remember trying to hit him hard. It was just everything was really flowing. It was sharp. I had a very good camp. Castillo, that was the first time I started working with Castillo Clayton. Mm -hmm. uh, he was my chief Olympian. partner for this fight. Yep. Olympian. Um, and from there, he was never the same after the third round. Once he got knocked down, I could see he was shell shocked. Then I was almost thinking, this is too easy. Like he's standing in front of me inside, and he's not even trying to hold me. And so it's like this must be a ploy. Like he must be playing possum. So I started thinking it's too good to be true. But afterwards, you know, uh, what I really realized watching the tape is his legs. He was a little shell shocked. After that knockdown, his legs were never quite the same. And also, I had... I got. He a, seems lost, though. Yeah. And I have to applaud the referee, because um, the, if I would have had this referee for Red Catch or Derry Matthews, we'd see a much oh. different fight. Because this guy was letting us work inside mm -hmm. and punch our way out of exchanges. You know, he wasn't interfering with the action and trying to disrupt the flow of the match. And I was able to really fight my fight from there. Uh, you know, so I, I really commend this referee, because uh, he had a... Referees can can influence. They can make or break a fight sometimes. And he, a good referee is one that is heard but not seen. And he oh. he, de he definitely fits the mold. And in this fight, they were like, if you hear the commentator, I had to send the message here. He clocks me after the bell. And you hit him. I hit him back twice as hard to send a message that I'm not going to give you an inch during the three minutes of work time. I'm not even going to let you get any free shots after anything you do. You make a mistake, you're going to pay. And you're doing uh, what they call like the bump and run, right? You keep bumping him off with your shoulder to yeah. get the left hand. Is that something that you kind of needed to do to evolve from the Hernandez um, and the Red Cash fight? It was just everything uh, kind of came together on this fight. It's that it's an old old school it's an old school trick uh, you can do on the inside to just uh, create some space to punch, and uh, it's a move that I I know, but I hadn't done it in years. I probably hadn't used that move since <laughs> the amateurs, to be honest with you. And I don't know, it wasn't something that I worked on in camp that we. So you and George that. didn't plan on. We didn't plan on that. I mean, you know, it was a move I always knew, but I I got away from it for years. I hadn't done it since the amateurs, and for some reason that night something just told me the moment kind of took me, and I uh, there it is again. I just remember <laughs> saying, I'm gonna try it, 
And I was like, it just came to me like, this makes sense. I'm going to do this. And I haven't done that move in years. But it, it really worked like a charm in this fight. And it really allowed you to keep distance. But he, did he hurt you at all in this fight? Because I think besides two or three small shots, it didn't seem anything significant. Because you're just absolutely working him. <laughs> he hurt me one time with a body shot. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what round if we've if we've missed or passed that moment, but anyways, I remember hurting me with a body shot with a right uppercut to the belly inside, and you'll see me like I'll squat a little bit, <laughs> and then I don't throw a punch for like the next 20 seconds, but he never picked up on it, and I just you know I just kept my poker face, and then I eventually got back to work. But um, I remember he, I I thought he won the first round and got off to a good start. It uh, I had to find my range a little bit and adjust to his speed. Mm -hmm. Um. And I remember, I remember taking a counter right hand to the head in the first round. I remember thinking, okay, that didn't hurt, but I don't want to take too many more of those for for ten rounds, you know. Seems like a seems like a good idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not get punched. <laughs> and then right here, it's just the same game plan. Uh, Darkin at this point, he was uh, with Bernard Hopkins was saying he was going to be the next big thing. Bernard Hopkins, so was Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley was there. The same camp, right? In they, his camp, yeah. he, was, he was there in his entourage. His son was Shane Mosley Jr. See, here he too. said you, you poked him in the eye. Yeah, he was looking for a way out. It's called the left hook. <laughs> he, was, he was looking for a way out. Now I'm pissed off, and I'm trying to put him away because I know he's trying, to find, he's trying to find a way out. Are you she, trash talking while you're in... In tight with him? No, no, I never, uh, no, I never trust talk. It was, it was all business. Just work this guy and uh, talk with my fists. Make this guy hurt. So late in this fight, now we're in the ninth round. Do you have any worries or you're just trying to get to the end? No, no worries. And I'm not, I wouldn't say trying to get to the end. I, I, I'm still trying, I'm still hoping that, uh, that I can stop him if I just keep pounding, uh, pounding away long enough. Because I know he was getting weaker and weaker with every round. But uh, I just remember everything was working here. Like, even if he was hitting me, I was giving it back. But I was always remembering to move my head after I punch. Try not to, uh, ooh, he hit a headbutt there. I'm, that was unintended. I'm not a dirty fighter. But I, as you can see, I got right back to work. I didn't feel sorry for him either. I'm not about to apologize. <laughs> um, it's, it was an accident, but, hey, we're in a fight. And at this point, I'm thinking it's a street fight. Um, it's, and you don't want to give him an the, inch to no inch. give him a puncher chance? Absolutely not. We're in the ninth round. You're deep into the fight. Uh, no holds barred. All bets are off right now. So now we're in the tenth round. Going into this, is George telling you just to stay on him? Give them no choice. Don't don't get comfortable and let him. Don't let him back in. Don't give them any reason to steal this win from you. Keep up what you've been doing, and don't 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 try to take any stupid chances, but don't coast either. You know, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, don't let him off the hook. Here and now, I'm trying to put him away and go for broke because I really think I got him. And oh, the second time he buckles me here. That punch buckled me a little bit, and uh, I recall. Well, it seems like you weren't phased. But it did. It did. I remember. I remember. Uh, I felt a little. Uh, <laughs> I felt like a like a, a shock in my legs for a second. And uh, do you and have this oh recover. shit moment or no? No, no, not an oh shit moment. I was like, oh, oh. I'm up now. Thank you. <laughs> Just a like, oh shit. Okay, <laughs> get my hands up. That's a good moment with me and Matt there. It was, <laughs> but he was he so been, happy. He might have been more. That, you, Matt's not an emotional guy, but he might have been more emotional than Dad there <laughs> in this fight. Because <laughs> this was a fight you weren't supposed to win. Well, you remember Matt too. Matt. So Matt's the guy that Dad. When we, when the opponents get wrapped up, mm -hmm. he Matt. Dad sends Matt because he's a bulldog. He sends them to go. Supervisor. If anyone doesn't know shit. Matt, he is intimidating as hell. <laughs> For a little guy. <laughs> but uh, so Dad sends Matt to go and uh, supervise whenever the opponent's getting his hand wraps, and that's to ensure that there's no tampering. How good does this feel? The old man holding oh, you up. Oh, yeah. Beautiful moment. On ESPN. Beautiful moment. So Matt put up with a lot of flack from his crew because he's in the dressing room watching Dargan get wrapped, and they're just trolling him the whole time. I remember him saying there's like a dozen of them. They're circling him. They circle them like sharks. <laughs> And they got the boombox and they're rapping in his face and everything and all this stuff. And Matt's just standing there with his arms crossed, and a poker face on. <laughs> he comes back to the dressing room. Okay, they had the so boombox rapping in his face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Straight out of a movie, eh? Yeah. Psych job. Boy man. from Cornwall was like, you guys look like fools. Yeah. <laughs> My, just, you know, the only white guy in the room, you know, with a bunch of dozen plus guys. Super black, white Matt Black, Mad black dudes from Philly and super white beast, you know, French and Dutch, I mean. <laughs> Doesn't get any more white than that. <laughs> you retired, Carl Dargan. <laughs> he hasn't fought since. Nah, he's been. Uh, and just the you ruined him. 
You ruined him, Donnie. Mentally. Mentally. You know what? The guy's got the tools to come back, but, but some guys, when they get put on a pedestal so early in their career and they feel invincible, they don't know how to deal with that kind of, um, with that kind of setback, you know? But uh, to put things in perspective on just how good Dargan was, though, this guy was on the national team uh, for, for years as, as an amateur. He won the Pan American Games, the Commonwealth Games, and uh, he was teammates with Terence Crawford on the national team. A gold medal, yeah. They used to have gym wars, and Terence Crawford today is currently the junior welterweight world champion at 140, one of the best fighters in the world, bar none, pound for pound. Dargan was on this guy's level. These guys used to have gym wars on, on the national team together, and they're still friends. They hang out to this day. He was sparring partner when Canelo Alvarez was getting ready to fight Floyd Mayweather in 2013. Dargan was one of the very few guys that didn't get kicked out of his camp and made it uh, right to the end of Canelo's camp as his chief sparring partner. And he's only a lightweight. Canelo fight was fighting at 154. So just to put in perspective... Legit. Legit. Yeah. Bernard Hopkins was telling this guy is the next world champion. So was Shane Mosley. So, you know, I get mad now. There's some American press that say, oh, he was overhyped and he got exposed against Tony Lewis. No, it's just... <laughs> I was I was better. Give me my props. Yeah, give yeah, me my props. Give me my credit. Yeah.